everyone, this is Matt Two Show, and uh, we're going to look at, uh, this is our second video on experiments and experimental design. So in our last video we kind of looked at the basic ideas behind experiments. We also looked at an experiment uh, involving uh, medication. But I wanted to give you another example and just to walk through some of these key ideas that we were talking about and how an experiment runs. Okay, so let's take a look at the example of we want to prove that texting while driving causes car accidents. It's a big problem, especially at our college. We've had so many students that have been in bad, bad car accidents from texting. Um, so suppose I want to prove, though, that texting causes car accidents. See, the problem here is that just because I have, if I have data um, showing uh, whether or not the person had a car accident and whether or not the person was texting, that data in itself actually does not prove that texting causes car accidents. That would be what we call an observational study, right? Um, collecting data without controlling confounding variables. In other words, there's probably a lot of reasons that might go into somebody having a car accident uh, other than just texting. So just because you have data on texting and, and um, car accidents doesn't necessarily prove that it was the texting that caused the car accident and not something else, right? That's the main problem with it and why experiments were really developed. So we're trying to prove some kind of cause and effect, right? An experiment is a scientific method that controls those confounding variables in order to prove cause and effect. So we saw last time that we wanted to create two similar groups of people to compare. Okay, so um, I would want a group of people, maybe we'll call that the treatment group, they're the ones that are going to be texting while driving, and then uh, we'd have to compare them to a control group where they were just driving and not texting. So we want these two groups to be almost alike in every way we can think of except the texting part. I also got to make this sort of a safe experiment. I don't want anybody getting hurt. So there's probably some few different ways we could go about this. But I wanted to give you the idea that you could probably, you might even get away with using the same people measured twice. Now there's actually a lot of reasons why scientists don't go for that. Um, there's a lot of reasons why uh, using the same people twice doesn't work in a lot of situations. But let's suppose that I did want to set up an experiment like that, and I just want to think it through a little bit. So I'm going to set up an obstacle course with cones. So they're just going to drive in an empty parking lot just with some cones, and they're going to drive the same, everybody in the experiment is going to drive the same car. I'm going to give them the same phone. They're not going to use their own phone. They're going to all use the same phone that they're, none of them have seen before. Um, I want to make sure their helmet, maybe a four four-point restraint so they're really belted in a roll cage to make sure that nobody gets hurt. Try to, we'll try their best to make sure all the safety precautions. Now remember there's in an experiment there's sort of two ideas right there's there's the explanatory variable that's the thing that's doing the cause so in that case that'll be texting or not whether the person was texting while they drove or did they just drive and then their response right the number of cones they hit during the course so how many cones did they hit when they were not texting and how many cones did they hit when they were texting? All right, so um, I probably, again, want to control for confounding variables. So let's think about what are some of the confounding variables here. Um, by the way, they probably want to be texting the same thing as well. So I'd make them all text the same exact sentence or the same exact thing. Uh, I don't want them each texting their own um, so they should all be texting probably the same thing as well, so that would control that. So there's a lot of confounding variables that go into uh, somebody having a car accident. So can you think of any? Can you think of something that might influence a person having a car accident other than, um, than uh, their, uh, whether or not they were texting? Remember, the explanatory variable is not a confounding variable. It's something besides that that might influence your response. So can you think of any? So what would we say? Maybe the age of the driver might be an issue. How much experience they have driving? How many years of experience do they have? Right? 
Uh, the condition of the car, right? Condition of the car might be an issue of having a car accident. If your tire blew out, you know, there's all, the condition of the car might be an issue. Uh, what else? What else? Maybe somebody's hand-eye coordination, right? Their, their genetics. We right? always said genetics is always a huge factor. Um, so their hand-eye coordination. Their eyesight. Right? Their eyesight. What else? Can you think of anything else that might influence somebody? Uh, whether they were on another, like alcohol, right? Were they all were alcohol or or um, other medication or just or drugs or any kind of that could influence a, a, a car accident? Uh, can you think of anything else that might influence a car accident? You probably think of a lot of things. Um, and if you're dealing with texting, maybe the size of their hands, right? Their hand size. Right? How about their ability to text? Like uh, maybe some people are better at texting one-handed than others, right? Uh, those are probably all things I should think about. So I need to control all of these confounding variables if I'm going to prove it was the texting and only the texting that caused the car accident and not something else, right? The idea, idea of experiments is to prove that it's that one variable that's causing the other. And that means you have to rule out all of this. Well, I'm going to use the idea of using the same people measured twice. So I got these group of, uh, let's suppose I got this, this group of people that are willing to do this experiment with me. And I'm basically going to have them drive the obstacle course. So I'm going to have them drive the obstacle course um, with no distractions. So no, they're not allowed to play with their radio. and There's no radio in the car. All they have to do is just drive. There's no phone in the car. All they have to do is just drive the obstacle course. And I'm going to count how many cones each person hit. Now, and then I'm going to give them a phone and have them text the same amount, same, same sentence uh, on their phones while they're driving the course. And then I'll count how many cones they hit again, right? And um, so if it's the same people measured twice, think about it this way. My texting group and my no texting group have the exact same ages, right? Because the same people. They have exact same amount of experience driving because it's the same people. Measured twice. Uh, the condition of the car was the same car for everybody. Uh, their genetics are exactly the same because it's the same people measured twice, right? They have the same hand-eye coordination. The two groups have the same hand-eye coordination, the same exact eyesight. Um, I probably have to make sure that nobody in the, in the experiment was using alcohol or drugs at the time. Um, they have the exact same hand sizes. Uh, and again, exact same ability, ability to text one-handed or, or not. So those are all things that might influence um, that somebody getting into a car accident other than tech, whether or not they were texting. Now this one in particular, I might not even list that under confounding variables um, because that almost goes with this, right? It almost goes with the explanatory variable. Uh, but I think that's still an issue, right? Their ability to text one-handed. So again, I would again that's something I still want to account for. So again, you want to really account for all of those confounding variables. By the way, some people call confounding variables also lurking variables, lurking variables. Uh, though um, I was talking to a statistician uh, not too long ago, and she said that um, the she thinks of the confounding variables as the ones she already knew, the list she already made before the start of the experiment. That she, those are the ones she's been controlling for, and she thinks of a lurking variable as something that she forgot, something that she didn't account for, that messed up her whole experiment. Because you've got to account for all of these confounding variables. So she kind of mentioned that she kind of thinks of a lurking variable, something that's outside, something she didn't think of at the start. That's why it's so important to think this list through before you start the experiment. 
All right, so now all we got to know now is how did they do, right? So if my texting group, right, if my texting group hit a lot more cones, right, maybe we might look at the average, the, pop, uh, the mean average amount of cones. Um, so they hit significantly more cones than the no texting group, right? then I really have proven that texting causes car accidents, okay? It's not any of these variables because the two groups were the same in all these variables. It's not their ages, it's not their experience, it's not the condition of the car. Um, it wasn't any of these things. The only reason why they hit more cars, the only difference between my two groups was that one group was texting and the other group was not. But it was the same people measured twice, so again, it controlled all the confounding variables. My, my, control, my treatment group and my control groups were really the same people, so they, they were perfectly alike. Does that make sense? So in general, just because you collected some data doesn't prove cause and effect. It can, you can show that they're related. You can show they're associated. In fact, in our class, we'll, we'll talk more about uh, showing relationships and, and associations. Um, but that never proves causation. It doesn't prove one thing causes the other. You have to have some kind of experimental design to control the confounding variables, pr prove these are not in the, in the process, and then you can sort of, that proves the, the causation, the cause and effect. Okay? So I just wanted to give you another example of an experiment. So this is Matt show and Intro Stats, and I will see you next time.